Good day, ladies, gents, anyone watching. Uh, this is a supplementary video. Probably write that somewhere. Uh, blue on blue doesn't look good. Let's do green. Supplementary. I missed the R. I'm going to put the R right there. I don't think that's spelled right. Somebody correct me if it's not. Mr. Benjamin's here. I'm not going to be able to fit in the end there, but that's okay because I have enough space for a smiley face. Give myself eyebrows, maybe even a nose one day. I'm not going to do that right now. Anyways, this is drawing compounds, specifically looking at polarity. This is something that came up in a comment to a lesson being taught. It doesn't matter when it came up. It's April 8th, 2020. I'm going to move on. Learning goals for this lesson. We're going to look at, or we're going to recall, valence shell electrons. This is coming up a lot, so it must be important as well as bonding and ionic versus molecular compounds. These two things are highly connected. Okay, I'm gonna keep that in mind. We are gonna define polarity and charges. Charges we've already talked about, positive versus negative, and what that means. Finally, we're gonna describe with images why oil and water don't mix. One thing I wanna make clear, I'm not gonna talk about electronegativity because for this grade, grade nine, we don't really talk about it. So if you're looking for electronegativity, I can talk about it in a different video, but I won't talk about it right now. Recall, we're gonna redefine valence shell. This is the outermost shell with electrons. This image is very important. The charges, let me write that in a different color, associated here come from the valence shell electrons and the sharing or gaining or losing of electrons. So this all controls, excuse me, controls reactivity and it is used when bonding I'll put points here so valence shell electrons control reactivity and they're used when bonding I like to use oxygen and carbon as an example so if I draw an oxygen here we know oxygen has eight electrons Pretty sure the hand is somewhere here. It's going to get in the way, and I apologize. Two go into the first shell. And six are left over. So, my oxygen should have six valence shell electrons on it. Two in pairs, and two free electrons. Meaning, those free electrons are free to bond with another element. Whatever element's around that has free electrons, it will bond with it. Since oxygen is going to gain two electrons, it'll have a charge of negative two once it is bound or once it has created a bond. It will be more negative. Okay? If I erase all this and I talk about carbon, carbon's interesting and unique. Looking at a periodic table, carbon is right here. It's kind of hard to see. It's beside nitrogen. Anyways, carbon has six electrons. So again, two in first shell, meaning four left over. Okay, so if I get rid of that, I draw my carbon, it'll actually have four electrons on it. Now, carbon wants to have eight in total, so it could actually lose four or gain four. Odds are it's going to gain four for it to have bonds, but could go either way. Why is that important? Well, when we start drawing them, you'll see why. Another quick recall, ionic compounds versus molecular compounds. Ionic have a metal and a non-metal, will always have a metal and non-metal. The metal, because metals want to lose electrons, generally speaking, will be more positive, and the non-metal, because they gain electrons, will be more negative. Okay, compounds will have, whoops, compounds have in ends, have, oh man, compounds have, okay, let me rewrite this, compounds have blank in ends, and that's supposed to be charges. For example, NaCl, now quick naming, this is sodium, this is chlorine, whoops, Put a D in there because I'm thinking ahead. But we change the ending to I-D-E. So I'm going to write that in yellow. 
So this is actually sodium chloride. Okay, that's a quick aside on naming. That CH looks terrible, so I'm going to draw that again. And of course I've erased my L accidentally. So NaCl, sodium chloride, we're going to write it up here. I'm writing it again because I want to use this space to draw my sodium chloride. This is salt, by the way, as we know. I'll have sodium, and if you look at your periodic table, sodium is group one. So it, want, it has only one electron, and it kind of wants to lose that one electron. Chlorine is group 17. It has seven valence shell electrons. You can do the math for you later if you'd like, and one electron here. Now, a bond will form here. This electron, for reasons I'm not going to explain, will kind of be closer to this side. That means negative pairs here, all electrons, right? This is really negative on this end. Sodium, since it just lost its electron, well, it didn't really lose it, they're sharing it, but chlorine has a stronger hold on it. This is going to be a bit more positive. So as you can see, this side, sodium, really positive. Chlorine, I'm going to get rid of all these because there's way too many of them. I'm going to put negatives, negative, 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 negative. This whole side, more negative. This side, more positive. Okay? So we have two completely different ends here. This is known as polar. Molecular compounds, two, two non-metals, excuse me, not charged ends. Now, that's not always the case, but for now, molecular compounds don't have charged ends. Methane is our example. I'm going to draw it quickly. Carbon in the middle. Carbon has four electrons that are free. And as we can see in the structural formula, CH4, so I have four hydrogens. Each hydrogen shares an electron. So bond, 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 bond. Because hydrogen's kind of losing an electron, it's going more towards the carbon in each side. I hope these arrows show up. This is all more positive, okay? Positive end here, positive end here, positive end here, positive end here. So that means this whole thing is surrounded by positives. So this is not polar. Now where can I write that? Write that somewhere here. Not polar, okay? <laughs> Do a couple more quick drawings. I'll do them in a bit more detail. I did want to make this video short. We're already eight minutes, so it's probably the last thing. Anyways, hydrogen, salt, C3H8 is propane. I like propane for reasons that I don't need to describe. I'm going to give myself a bit more room here, though. Move that there. Move that there. Salt. Sodium. Slash. Chloride. Ah, whatever. Outside of the lines, so that's okay. Propane. I like propane and propane accessories. All right, water. If I look at my periodic table, hydrogen, and I have two of them, I know hydrogen has one electron. Multiplied by two equals two electrons. Oxygen, I know, has six electrons. Multiplied by one equals six. In total, I should see eight electrons when I draw this out. I start with my oxygen in the middle. I have six electrons on oxygen. Now if I draw my two hydrogens, because I know I have two of them. One here. Bonding point. One here. Bonding point. Keep in mind, these are paired up already, so I can't bond there. Now these are paired. If I count out all of the electrons on each atom, hydrogen has two, so it's happy. This hydrogen has two, so it's happy, because it's balanced. It has a full valence shell. And oxygen, in total, has eight. So he's happy as well, or she. I'm not going to discriminate. If I consider the charges, I have two pairs of negatives here. So this side is more negative. Okay, this whole thing. It's negative because of those electrons there. If I look at this here, there's no electrons anywhere here, right, on my hydrogen. So this is more positive. Same with this side. 
So I have a negative side up here. I'm going to draw a line here. This side is all negative, and this side is more positive. Therefore, water is polar, because it has two opposite ends, two poles, just like the world, North Pole, South Pole, two opposite ends, right? Or a magnet, whichever way you look at it. If I draw out salt again, I drew it over here. Let's do a different color. Sodium, Na, chlorine, Cl. Draw the electrons in. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a pair there. These are all negative charges. It's all negative everywhere here. This is all positive. So again, if I draw my line here separating it, this whole side is more positive, this whole side is more negative. So again, polar. Okay, so sodium chloride is polar as well. If I look at propane, this is gonna be a bit harder to draw, not necessarily harder, it's gonna take longer to draw. Carbon, right here, three of them. I know carbon has four electrons, multiplied by three, because I have three of them here, that's 12. Hydrogen, I have eight. One multiplied by eight, one electron multiplied by the eight hydrogens. That equals eight. So in total, I should have 20 electrons showing on my diagram. I know the structure, I'll have carbon, 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 all bonded together. And I know, because hydrogen only has one bonding point, all my hydrogens will be surrounding my carbons. So I'll have eight in total, okay? Each one of these lines equals two electrons, okay? Because one of those lines is the same as two dots. So if I count them up by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I do have my 20 in total, okay? Now I'm going to look at each individual, I uh, probably wanted that line actually, but whatever. Let's draw it again. Line equals two electrons. Two electrons. If I look at each atom, hydrogen, 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 they each have two electrons on them, so they're happy. Same goes for the rest of them. I'm just not going to circle them. If I look at each carbon, that has eight on it. That has eight on it, so that's good. And that has eight on it. They might be sharing them, but they're all happy because they all have the right number of valence shell electrons. Remember valence shell? Okay. Now, the one thing you want to keep in mind here, though, those kind of partial charges that we have. Hydrogen, whenever it's compounded, compounded, whenever it's in a compound, is going to be positive. Now, those positives are surrounding. There is no negative charge here anywhere. So propane is nonpolar because there's no poles. Okay. C3H8 is propane. Oil, fat, triglycerides, all of those things have very similar structures in the sense that they're all carbons, whoops, all carbon and hydrogen. So fat and water, oil and water don't mix because all fats and oils are nonpolar. Now the one thing I didn't do, so I'm going to do it here, is define polarity. Opposite charges on either end, okay? So if I draw my water again, positive charge here, positive charge here, negative charge here, okay? The term like dissolves like, or that phrase, will always come up when you're talking about polarity. Salt dissolves into H2O because they're both polar. And to draw this out, uh, let me do NaCl in green. So this was our negative end. And let's do this in yellow. This was our positive end. And let's do, let's actually erase this and make it a bit bigger, easier to see. I don't know what happened there. Undo, undo. Okay, let me just erase it all. Right here. Because they're both polar. I'll draw an ACL again. 
This is a negative side. This is the positive side. Actually, let me draw an ACL in the middle. That would make a bit more sense. Keeping in mind negative, positive. I'm actually going to make positive in green so it stands out a bit more. And I'm going to draw two water molecules. One here. And one here. I've drawn them in the same orientation for a specific reason. Keep in mind, this side is negative. So that would mean this side is also negative. The negative attracts the positive. In this end, this side is positive, and this side is positive. The positive end attracts the negative. That is why salt and water mix together so well. Salt actually dissolves in water. Oil and H2O won't mix. I'm just going to use methane. This is an example, even though it's not oil, I know people don't freak out, please. H, 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 H. And my water molecule, uh, H, H. So this is all positive here. So the negative oxygen side will be attracted towards it, but that's it. There's nowhere for these positives to go. They're actually repelled. They don't attract. Draw a little red hand circle there. So they do not attract. That's why water and oil won't mix. I am up to 16 minutes. I didn't want to go this long, but that's okay. Hopefully you've been with me the whole time or you've stayed with me the whole time. I'll say thank you, smiley face, and have a great day.